You're listening to The Head Trash Show with me, Alexia Leachman, author of Clear Your Head Trash. Head Trash is the home to the Head Trash Clearance Method, which you can use to get rid of the fears, stresses and anxieties in your life. Every week, I'll be sharing insights, stories and interviews to inspire you to clear your head trash so that you can find calmness, confidence and clarity in your life and work. To find out more about clearing head trash and creating a headspace, head over to clearyourheadtrash.com. And now for today's show. Hello and welcome back to The Head Trash Show. My name is Alexa Leachman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now on today's show, I want to talk about the five core emotional wounds that we all suffer from. Yes, there are some universal wounds that we have all got going on in bucket loads. Now the problem is that we often, well most of us I think, don't even know that we've got them going on. And so this is why I want to dive into this so that you can have some a level of awareness around some of the wounds that are in control almost or influencing you know putting a a force over some of your patterns of behaviors feeding your fears um, affecting you creating some self-sabotaging patterns of behavior you know behind all of this head trash that you might be wrestling with are some traumas or some wounds or you know, like experiences that you've had, some very painful experiences before the time that you can even remember that are affecting all of these sort of unhelpful patterns that you're experiencing today. Um, So this is a really important episode if letting go of all of this head trash is really important to you. Um, Now, it's 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 a bit of a deep dive episode, so I would definitely recommend that you get a notepad if you are interested in weakening these wounds, clearing these wounds and, you know, moving on from them so that you can almost create a a clean emotional slate without all of that crappy head trash that's sapping your energy and affecting you in all of those negative ways that you're wrestling with today. Now, before I dive into this episode, I also want to let you know about some free trauma healings that I'm going to be running uh, or trauma clearances. And um, they, as part of this series that I'm going to be running for the last quarter, the last couple of months of uh, 2022, um, then I'm going to be featuring many of these core universal wounds that we all suffer from because because you know that means that we can that we're all suffering from them they can we you know we can a lot of us can benefit from getting rid of this stuff so i really i'm doing this because i really want to help you to let go of that stuff that's that's almost that's feeding your head trash you know it can be really hard to let go of some of our fears let go of some of the conflicts we've got going on when they're constantly being fed by this kind of invisible force, this invisible monster that's lurking beneath the surface. And that invisible monster are these wounds, right? Of course, we have, there are many, many more wounds that individually we have. But as a collective, the five wounds I'm going to talk about today are there. We've all got them. So if we could all clear those for starters, that will give us a really good start in terms of clearing ourselves of the head trash that's negatively affecting us. So if you're interested in signing up, finding out more about the live trauma clearances that I'm doing, then just go to clearyourheadtrash.com and forward slash live clearances. And there you will find out where they're happening. Like it's all going to be online. It's going to be once a week on a Thursday at 2 p.m. UK time. So um, sign up. Once you sign up once, you will be alerted for all of them. So you just need to sign up once for the whole series. And there's going to be a whole series starting in um, early October, going right through until the end of the year. Okay, so now I've got that out of the way. Um, What I want to do now is dive into today's episode. This is a really important topic because some of these wounds are running so deep within us that a lot of us aren't even aware that they are running. Um, But if we knew about them and then healed these wounds, the repercussions or the the improvement that we'll notice in our own mental health, emotional well-being is just staggering. Um, So I want to dive into some of the more common emotional wounds that we might be suffering, because there are actually a collection of universal wounds that we all suffer from. And that sounds a bit strange, given the, the differing lives that we all lead. But when I dive into these a little bit more, 
you'll start to get a, a sense of why some of these wounds are universal. Now, if you really want to kind of improve your life, get to your happy place. Healing these wounds is, is essential because they can really be the source. They can they can drag you down. They can um, be the source of lots of triggers and fears in your life. Some of the beliefs that aren't really helpful. A lot of those things that are playing out that are showing up as head trash in your life, their roots are probably in these wounds. And so if you can get to the root of these issues for yourself, then a lot of those triggers, a lot of those beliefs will collapse. A lot of those fears will fall by the wayside because they're, they're being propped up by these wounds, these traumas, these experiences that have kind of gathered. And the more that you um, have these experiences that kind of all gather around certain themes and certain uh, beliefs and certain areas in your life, then they just sort of grow to such a point that they become these really, really sort of heavy, uh, emotional pieces of toxic energy that are just weighing you down in, in a really kind of big way. Um, so, you know, for us to kind of sort through some of this stuff, first of all, takes a level of awareness as to what they are. And that can be really hard if we don't know what they are. You know, you, you can go through life thinking, oh, my God, I keep repeating the same bad habits. I keep running around in circles. I keep sabotaging. I've got this really terrible belief. I think I'm rubbish. I think I'm not worthy. I think I'm not good enough. I think where's it all come from? How do I sort it out? Blah, blah, blah. And, and it can be really frustrating when we're faced with a life around us that we find so stressful, we're full of anxiety. And the roots of some of that are in these wounds that we, we don't really have any visibility of. So that's what I want to talk through some of these universal wounds, because just by getting visibility of them can really help you to start going, ah, oh, right, okay, that's what that's about. Ah, oh, I'll go and sort that out now then. So uh, what I've got here in this video, what I'm going to talk about in this video are five of the most common emotional wounds that we have. You will see this list a lot. If you just Google five emotional wounds, you will see this list everywhere. It's kind of recognized as, as these five universal wounds that we all have. So I'm not, um, I haven't come up with anything brand spanking new here. Um, this is well established, um, well established within the world of psychology and, 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 and therapy. Um, but what I want to help you in this video today is not just say what they are, but also it show you how they might be showing up for you so that you can easily spot whether or not you've got them going on. I mean, we've all got them going on to some degree, but some of us are being driven by these and some of us have just got them going on in a mild manner. I know when I was researching and, get, and getting a little bit more into trying to just better understand all these wounds, I was when I've got a blog post that goes with this, I was writing it out and thinking, oh my God, yeah, this is me. This is so me. Oh my God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And others I'm like, well, yeah, a bit, a bit. And others I'm like, oh my God, I was that person for so long, you know. So so you'll probably come across the same way. You'll look at some of these and go, mm, yeah, a bit. And others you'll be like, oh my God, that's me in my life right now. Okay, thank you. I'm going to sort this out. Um, and then also what I'm going to be sharing with you is recommended head trash clearances for those of you that are using head trash clearance using uh my book the technique in the book um if you're using head trash clearance to get rid of your head trash then i'm also going to give you some key things that you can work on that are going to help to kind of loosen this wound up okay so um so yeah so now one let's just talk about what what is a universal wound then and and i've mentioned that there are these this list of five but just just dive a little bit into what that means, really. How can it be such a universal wound? Now, a lot of these are going to be things that you experience. Well, they are all childhood wounds. So when we talk about in child, when we talk about um childhood traumas, this is the kind, this is this is the territory that we're in when we're talking about these kind of wounds. Um, but they 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 happen universally because, and I'm just gonna give you a really simple example here, you know, to show exactly how this kind of stuff can manifest and why they are universal. Now, so let's just say that a mother has just given birth to her baby and the birth wasn't brilliant. And so she needs some medical attention afterwards, like immediately afterwards. So in that moment, you know, she's got the baby and then she hands over the baby because she needs some medical attention. Now, in that moment, the baby's going to feel rejected by its mother. It's going to feel abandoned. It's also probably going to feel some separation anxiety. Now, that has happened in the first half hour of its life. 
The mother didn't intend to do that. There was no intention, no bad intention there at all. However, a new person, a new little baby that's been in a little in a womb for so long, held so close to his mother, doesn't know any of that. And it's just going to be how it feels in that moment. And those kind of experiences are just going to mount up throughout the first few years of life where there are going to be situations where maybe you got lost in the supermarket, where, um, you know, a parent promised that they would take you to the park after whatever, after lunch, and then they didn't. And so you have, you're disappointed and you feel betrayed and, and all of that. And, and really, when you think about some of those examples, you think, but it doesn't matter because the emotional child, the child within us doesn't understand the context. And so it's how they feel in that moment. And all of those experiences are just going to stack on top of each other over time. And if you had parents that were struggling, that had were super stressed, that were dealing with their own life challenges, then they might not have been reacting to you in uh, when you were a child in the best way. I know as a parent, you know, how easy it is to lose your shit with your kids when they're driving you at the wall. And so you might react in ways that you don't, that you think, oh my God, what did I do, right? So it's so easy. Um, and and then you get parents that are kind of just crappy parents. So so the, the, the range that we have in terms of the parenting that we receive, whether it's from actual parents or from our main caregivers, you know, there's going to be a lot of behavior within that that doesn't have a bad intention to its root, but was felt in a, in a very important way and that has created some emotional scarring in the child. And so this is why there are these, these universal wounds that, that we all have, because the growing up journey is, is going to be remarkably similar from an emotional basis for many people that are going to capture a lot of these main themes. So, um, yeah, so what are they? OK, so I've mentioned five. So the first one, and I've got some notes, so forgive me for kind of checking my notes as I go through this. The first one is betrayal. And this comes from when you have the parent or the main caregiver has disappointed the child in some way. You know, maybe they lied to them. They said, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the park after lunch. And now we're not. Or, yes, you can have the ice cream. Now you can't. Um, or, you know, yes, you will go to camp. And no, no, you can't. Well, whatever it is, whether it's ice cream or camp or anything in between, um, then if that promise has not been fulfilled, then the child is going to feel let down and betrayed. They're going to think that you lied. And, and so the experience of being lied to is sort of creating this feeling of betrayal. Um, and again, you know, when I think about how I've behaved as a parent, I think, oh, my God, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm sure there's been loads of times I've said, yeah, 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 have the ice cream. Oh, actually, no, no, we're going we're gonna to not do ice creams now. We're gonna, the, the sun's gone in. No. <laughs> um, now, the thing with people who've had this wound, um, is that they they need to control everything. And so, and they also have a hard time trusting other people, right? And so they they also really want to impose their point of view. And they don't tolerate lies by other people because they've been lied to. And that's a real burning issue for them. The thing is that when they might not tolerate lies by others, but they, it also creates a blind spot for them as well, where they might be somebody that lies quite a bit and they don't necessarily see that they're doing the thing that they really, really hate in other people. Um, and so that you've got people, the adults that have had this betrayal theme running deep within their childhood, they're going to probably turn into adults with controlling personalities or they're trying to control everything. And they may have a, they might have a perfectionist streak as well because they just need everything to just be how they want it to be because they just want to cover their bases and make sure it's going to be exactly how it should be in their mind, okay? Um, you know, they, everything's got to be set in stone. There's been no loose ends, no room for things going wrong and being let down because they've been let down and they do not want the situation, the people to let them down again because that has been hurtful for them. So they can really um, show that they show up as kind of, they can they can be really good like uh, managers of managing projects and all that because they're really good at controlling stuff and having it all mapped out and being super super prepared and not letting anything escape their 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 gaze. So they, they you know that, that can, this can really serve people well. Um, it's not always negative. There are some really positive aspects to some of this, but 
you know, sometimes they, they just need to be a bit more balanced in, in how much they exert their control over others, because sometimes that might, might not be felt brilliantly by those around them. Um, and they tend to kind of feel, and I, I see myself so much in this, it's, it's crazy where I, where I used to be, it's funny, but they think that, you know, this ability to manage things and to have the control and to do all that, they think, oh, that's because i got a really strong character, that's a really good thing. Um, but they're quite blind in that moment in, 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 in understanding or perceiving what's really going on with them. And I know I was massively. Um, and I might still be, who knows, because right, we can be blind to our blind spots, can't we? But the thing about this betrayal wound is it can often lead to some other really negative feelings and beliefs as well. So you, you because you've been let down, then you don't feel worthy of these promises. So that can lead to feelings of, you know, negative self-esteem, lack of self-worth um, and, and not being worthy of what others have got to give. So also when people do give you stuff, you kind of you, you can't receive because you don't feel like that's you're worthy of receiving. So that can create sort of quite um, problems around just receiving presents or favours, things like that. Um, so how does it show it then? I've got a really good list here. So um, this lies thing that I've just mentioned, it can really sort of show up as a lack of tolerance for the lies. But but often you you lie to yourself, you lie to others as well. You're guilty of that thing that you hate in others, which is so often the case with head trashy things. Um, you will be imposing your will and your point of view on other people. This is that control piece showing up there um and and if you don't get what you want then you're not afraid to turn to manipulation to, to kind of get the control to help you feel okay um there's also this kind of constant need to improve and because you've got this this expectation that you know because you've had your expectations shot to bits then you you kind of have these high levels of expectation of yourself and others so this drives you so again this is a positive thing for some people this this thing that within them makes them want to kind of improve themselves is, that isn't wrong but sometimes we just push that too far and it can be unhealthy um an unhealthy kind of pushing 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 um there's also a sense of needing to feel special and important or to be worthy because you never really felt that and so you're always seeking it and, and hunting it down and it's it's this thing that you never reach it's like the carrot on a stick you never get it because you're always wanting it and never get it and so there's always this kind of chasing chasing going on um there's a lot of attachment to reputation importance of reputation how you are perceived and again you want to appear worthy and so some people who have got this wound will seek out the fancy titles, the letters after their name, the badges, the, um, you know, all the things that impress because it, it adds to your cachet and your worth because you don't have the worth inside. So you try and find ways of creating the worth in other people's eyes on the outside. Um, what else we got here? They need to be well prepared, um, which again is this control thing showing up and the perfectionist street showing up where you, you really want to, you prepare to the nth degree and you love planning, you love, you know, so, so there are people that prepare and then there are people that prepare with a capital P. These people are going to be the prepare with a capital P guys. They're going to be the ones that really do it to the minutiae of the decline. So again, this can really be very useful in certain lines of work um so it can serve you well but it can also be a bit of a bit of a pain if you're just organizing a trip to the cinema with your mates and they're like god's sake just we'll decide when we get there <laughs> we don't need to get it all organized right now um so this then, then that, this kind of need to prepare to the nth degree then feeds into this kind of lack of flexibility because it's like well you've prepared everything you've got it all figured out and if there's a slight hitch in the plan you're screwed because that you, you you're quite rigid because you, you for you to feel okay you needed that planning in place and now there's a change you haven't got that flexibility to move and go with the flow because it, it disrupts you and then you're like oh my god well I've lost control now because my plan's gone to shit and now what so yeah this lack of flexibility can come in when there's something unforeseen that comes in and you you can't really kind of um yeah it, it really disrupts your sense of control <laughs> um what else we got here lack of trust um sometimes this shows up in so it could be let's say if, if it's the opposite sex caregiver parent that let you down that betrayed you then that can then show up as lack of trust in the opposite sex it you know that can that can sometimes show up although 
it could just be universal. It depends on, you know, what your parenting, what your parenting experiences were like as a child. Um, the trust issues. Now, this trust stuff can really start showing up in terms of confiding in others, uh, getting to know other people, deepening those relationships with other people, uh, because you just don't want to get too close to them because they're going to let you down because you've been let down. So why won't these people lay you down? So there's a kind of you hold back in terms of those relationships. Um, there's also lots of quick thinking and reasoning going on, which that can mean that you might be very quick to jump to conclusions. So that with the people that have planned the nth degree, they, they've kind of figured it all out. So that helps them to kind of make quick decisions because they, they've kind of sussed everything out. Right. Um, but it also might mean that you do jump to conclusions that are slightly inaccurate or maybe you, you want to reverse out later on. Um, and then there's also this lack of tolerance and high levels of impatience with a tendency to offend. I, I This is totally me. <laughs> and I might still be that person, who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I literally could not tolerate a lot of faffing, a lot of, yeah, slowness, you know, people just faffing and being slow would drive me insane. So um, yeah, so that that was definitely a biggie for me. Um, so that's just, yeah, so that, I mean, you look at that list, you think, geez, my God, yeah, got that, got that. Even if you just got five things on that list, you, you've definitely got that wound going on, right? Um, so what are some of the re recommended head trash clearances you could do? Well, betrayal, obviously, uh, control with all its facets, you know, uh, letting go, holding on, things like that. Trust, trusting, self-trust, trusting others, um, being trustworthy, that kind of thing. Patience, impatience, you know, any kind of patience seems. Being tolerant or flexible, um, being knowledgeable and expert. You know, sometimes we kind of, because we want to be seen to be, um, we've got this high uh, expectation of ourselves. And that means we need to know all the things. And so we keep learning and learning and learning because we want to be seen to be knowing. So, so sometimes if we don't know all the things, then we can feel stupid and not worthy and blah 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 so we we place a high um importance on being knowledgeable and therefore being unknowledgeable if that's a thing or being lack of having lack of knowledge could easily be a, a bit of a trigger for us with others where we go oh my god they're so stupid or you know and or incompetent and suddenly that can spin out a, a new thing i massive trigger for me was incompetent people who didn't know what they were doing so yeah I've got this one in bucket loads um had this one in bucket loads um what else uh delegation so being able to delegate to others you know the surrendering of control is a good one to think about doing responsibility um being worthy being prepared being important all those would be really good clearances to help you to kind of loosen this wound um significantly OK, so that's betrayal. So now we're going on to the next wound, which is injustice. Now, it was really interesting because I was speaking to somebody about this, this wound of injustice and how some people have got this real like things have got to be fair. It's got to be fair. And if there's any sense of injustice and they, they just get really annoyed. And so obviously, if, if you immediately when I mentioned this wound to somebody, they went, oh, my God, I've got that. And that's all I'd said. Um, and then I was like, I'm writing up my notes for this and I was going through it and I was like, go through the list of how it shows up. And, and that person was just like, oh my God, they so have got that going on, you know? And then I was going through this list going, mm, not, not so much, some of these, but not so much. And so this is what I mean. Some of these wounds will be really strong with you and others maybe not so strong. So, um, so yeah, so where does this injustice wound come from? So it comes from being, growing up, being raised in a bit of a cold and authoritarian environment where your sense of individuality has been clipped somewhat. Um, so when we, and, and it's this sense of where you might, so this is where some parents, uber demanding parents um, that that could be really sort of high, high, um, I'm just thinking of some of those, you know, you get some of those parents that just put their kids in for all the talent shows. They want them to be the, the top grades. They want them to, do, you know, do all the things, get all the badges. That kind of environment can be, can be start fostering this kind of wound um, because of all those excessive demands that have been placed means that the person, the child, ends up feeling maybe ineffective or useless because they can't achieve some of those things. And so 
they're being pushed in a way that is is not helping them at all or beyond their limits. Um, and so this leads up to lots of feelings of being ineffective and useless. And, and these can really feed into like stay with the child into adulthood. Um, and so that turns into someone who's very, very demanding on themselves and, and pushing themselves all the time um, because they, they want to prove to themselves more than anything that they're not useless and they're not ineffective. But they're never going to be able to do that because of this wound that's just constantly feeding these feelings of being useless and effective. So that's why they're constantly pushing themselves and pushing themselves. Um, and then the coldness that they might have experienced as a child as well will also sort of lead them to sort of blocking their own sensibility and their own connection to their emotions. They might not have a very good lexicon or language around emotions. Sorry, that's my pick up child from school bell they might not have a um a good lexicon to articulate the emotions that they're experiencing and to talk about those emotions that they're experiencing um so because they've just blocked that aspect of themselves off because it, it it the environment that we're in just didn't allow for it didn't nurture it and so they just cut that off because it didn't serve them they so they stayed within that and that that means that they you know this lack of access to your emotional self can can make it very hard to navigate the emotional journey as a human right um now another consequence of all this injustice that the wound is is this rigidness that can come so they can be very um black or white and there's they're not very good at dancing in the gray that it's got to be this way got to be that way and if there's a little bit of gray they find that a little bit hard to navigate. Um, they also tend to try and be very important and have a sense of importance or acquire a lot of power. Um, so, you know, when you think about um, politicians just spring to mind, for some, I, don't know, I don't know why I thought of that. Um, now they also love things to be ordered and neat. And I'm just thinking of the person that I know now. I just think, God, yeah, they, you know, the way they lay out their stuff is just so neat and ordered. And it's got to be just, you know, just so. Um, and so they struggle with perfectionist things because this kind of, ex you know, extrapolates into other parts of their lives. Um, but also means that they're a, they, they really struggle with making decisions with certainty or kind of be able to make that decision in a in a reasonable time frame you know maybe they need to sit with the decision for quite a long time before being able to make it and even then they they kind of ooh, they, they're not fully into that decision they, they haven't fully committed to it so it can mean that making decisions can be a bit of a stress might feel overwhelmed by the a multitude of decisions that require to be made um so what are some of the wounds that this sign is present then so um constant optimism and difficulties in admitting that you're having problems because if you're having problems then you must be useless and effective so we're not going to say that because we don't want people to think that because well they probably think that anyway so I'm going to keep quiet <laughs> that's that's where that's coming from um controlling yourself to the, the the degree that you are always needing to appear perfect and um and and be perfect and do the perfect thing it's always got to be done just so um and so you'll have a high level of um self control over yourself in order to kind of be able to come you know express yourself in those ways there'll be a, a fear of not being in control you know this the idea of not being in control is going to be a, a difficult one for you to swallow because you need to be in control because obviously you've got things to be perfect and they need to be ordered and they need to be neat. And how can you have it ordered, neat and perfect if you've lost complete control of the situation and it's all chaos? The orderness and the neatness and the control is clearly not present when chaos is present. So that means chaotic situations, chaotic mess, all of that is going to be a challenge. Um, you're going to be very aware of the injustices around you. So, um, you know, this they, they can make strong activists because they're going to, anything that's not fair in the world is really going to strike a chord with you and get you angry, worked up, trigger you in some way. So um, the injustices around you are going to be quite, um, you're going to get roped into, like sucked into that energy. You're going to get involved, going to want to kind of do the right thing, make sure that people are stood up for that defended and, and that's going to sort of really kind of draw you into that but the, the the thing with that is another blind spot you might not therefore see your own injustices regards to others so others are probably being treated in unjustly or unfairly by you and you don't see that you're, you're just focused on on how you're perceiving the world around you what else have we got so problem showing feelings or expressing your emotions as i've mentioned already um 
And so this might mean that you then prioritize skills over feelings. And so maybe in the line of work that you do might mean that it's less of the softer skills, more of the actual hard skills that can be put in a box and sorted and be neat and ordered. <laughs> and feelings and soft skills are a little bit, oh, they're in the gray. They're in the gray. And that's too tricky. That's that don't have the awareness, the language, the capacity to cope with that that softer grey stuff. It's got to be this stuff that's in boxes, lines and rows. Um, problem creating a satisfying intimate relationship. Now, this is linked to this kind of emotional awareness that, um, that you don't have because of this cutting off of your emotional self and your sensitivities. And so this deepening of relationships can, can, can get quite difficult. And then that means that you're this coldness that you grew up with, that you're familiar with, means that you're totally fine with these, with the pain and cold environments. So these these challenging environments that, that that those of us that get a bit, well, it's a bit cold, I don't like it here. I don't like being in pain. I don't like, you know, I like it to be warm and cozy in my house. Then then those, you're fine with the pain and the cold. And so that might, that also means that you're able to push yourself physically more than maybe others, which is a good thing, right? So, you know, maybe things like pushing yourself, the discipline to do a, a, a demanding exercise regime and, and going out for that run, even when it's raining, you'll you'll do that because because you can deal with it and cope with it. Whereas I'm like, oh, it's raining today, I'm not going. Um, so yeah, so th this is this is this this coldness has really given you some some benefits in that way. But it also might mean that you don't acknowledge some illness or disease when it does start showing up for you, because again, that kind of then goes against this kind of like um yeah that yeah because you you don't notice those feelings you're not again in touch with some of that that feeling energy so you don't like you don't maybe acknowledge that that is going on and, and actually well, if it is going on then that then that means you're not in control and, mm, don't want to go there don't want to consider all that so we'll just put it over here um and then also because these high expectations that you that have been had of you then you will have a tendency to criticize others and yourself and be super critical of what's going on so um Again, I mean, these are things that behaviors that we see, gosh, all around us, right? These are behaviors, and, and I'm sure they're going to be some. There are some in there that, yeah, well, I haven't got this wound in bucket loads. Definitely got a lot of this going on. So, what are some of these head trash clearances that would be worth doing then if you're suffering from the injustice wound? Well, injustice, fairness, that kind of theme would be good. Control again, with all the facets I've mentioned, letting go, uh, losing control, regaining control, that kind of thing. Um, perfection, having problems. So being okay with having problems because it, because of having a problem in your mind will, well, if I've got a problem, that means I'm useless and effective. And so you're immediately getting triggered by the, the, the presence of problems because you, you might think that's down to you and your effectiveness and uselessness where, where it's not. So um, being OK, but what, we want, what, what you want to do is make peace for some of these things. So having problems, making mistakes again, same thing. Oh, I've made a mistake because I'm useless and ineffective. No, you've just made a mistake. It's fine. Like it's not the be all and end all. So making peace with making mistakes, being emotional, having connection. So be, being emotional or connection, that can be good clearances to do. Then again, the being useless, ineffective, incompetent. Yeah, I've had all those ones. I've cleared all those ones. Yes, they, they're really good clearances to do. Being lazy. My goodness, this is a really good one, especially with people that are super demanding and uh, want to make sure they do all the things and it's got to be all done. You know, the idea of just stopping and not doing anything. I'll go, well, I, I don't want to be lazy. That's so lazy. So lazy um, in my clients when they've cleared the late, done a lazy clearance, it's been like life changing for them. They've not realized exactly how lazy they were. They never thought of themselves as lazy and they've been super lazy, which is why I told them they were and they had to clear it. Um, being cold and rude. So being cold, even though you might not notice that you're being cold, you might, what you would pick up on is rudeness and lack of politeness in others. So, so this coldness theme, rudeness theme, politeness theme, that could be a really good theme to explore in terms of clearances, being flexible versus being rigid, those kind of things. Chaos. Um, but, you know, or being disorganized versus order and being organized, that can also be really, really useful uh, clearances to do. So the next one is humiliation. Now, this is when you suffer from some disapproval or harsh criticism from other people. And so maybe as a child, you were told that you were bad in some way, maybe stupid, slow, clumsy, overweight, that kind of thing. And maybe, and this is where this really kind of beds in, 
is maybe that was discussed in front of other people. So, I mean, it's all right being told there are aspects of yourself that that maybe could be improved. But when you're being sort of discussed in front of others in a critical way, then that can really kind of, that, that can really hurt. And that's where that wound can really sort of uh, get 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 bedded in um and so this kind of childhood experience can really affect our self-esteem and it makes it really hard for us to cultivate a really strong sense of self-worth so this is really going to be one of the main wounds i think that's probably behind the people pleaser in many of us um you know these people pleasing habits this overly helpful attitude um often to the detriment of yourself. So putting other people first, which is okay, but if you never put yourself first, then that's not okay, right? Um, But this can go the other way. As with many of these wounds, you know, we often operate at the extremes of this. So either you're putting everybody else first and, and doing everything to make everybody else happy, or you're just going completely the other way and you're massively selfish, potentially tyrannical, um, and you tend to maybe humiliate others as this kind of defense mechanism. So, you know, put other people down before they can put you down kind of thing. Um, So how does this wound show up then for people? Well, often we do things when we have this wound to be worthy or to be seen as worthy. Um, As I mentioned already with the people pleasing stuff, you know, you're putting other people's needs before your own. um, And, and, consistently to the detriment of yourself um often this is where we turn to food to satisfy some of those emotional needs so there may be a tendency to comfort eat to have a little bit more weight than maybe you should because of the comfort eating and you know using that as a way to help you to feel better now because of this humiliation that you've experienced you're probably using uh, you have an ability to make people laugh um, as a way of, you know, getting people to like you. You know, that's a really good way of getting people to like you is to, to be funny. Right. And that a lot of people use this um, often, though, but what, what you can kind of spot where it's going on is maybe that humor is coming from this way by mocking yourself or humiliating yourself. That self deprecating kind of humor that, that is often known, certainly among the British comedy scene and so maybe that's coming from this humiliation wound as a child there's a suppression here of the sensual drive um and maybe a reluctance to admit your sensuality so that can often show through with people with the humiliation wound um the other aspect because this criticism that's come through because you sort of grown up in an environment with this criticism, uh, maybe being humiliated or pick, not picked on, but your your bad points highlighted, let's say, is there's a, you might feel that you're constantly under the impression of being observed or seen because you've, because of this feeling that you, you're being criticised or, or things about you being noticed, then that feeling of being looked at or observed or, you know, it doesn't go away, even though you might not be, Uh, being looked at in that way um there is also this fear of punishment that comes through um in terms of the having this this excessive joy of life coming through you might feel unworthy to have these joys in your life because because it's just coming down to the fact that you're not worthy so having this sense of enjoying the greater thing the lovely things in life you feel like that that's you're going to be punished that that's not really worth you're not worth you're not deserving of that kind of stuff so so if you do go there then you you might then have a fear that you're going to get punished for it because actually you were it wasn't yours to have in the first place and and that's why we get punished right we've taken something that's not ours um so that might be a thing that that, that hangs with you as well um and and also there might be an overall sense of feeling a little bit sloppy or feeling unworthy or feeling feeling less than um, that can carry through with this sense of this wound of humiliation that that, that can come through. So what could be some of the uh, head trash clearances then that you could do um, that will help? Well, humiliation is a good one to start with. Always start with the the obvious, right? Humiliation. Also, independence, um, you know, and dependence, this idea of being dependent as well. Selfishness, 
the opposite, which might be generosity. Then there's like the, the seeking approval or pleasing others. That might be a good one as well. Um, this sense of being important or self-importance could be good to work on as well. Then, then whatever it was that you were criticised for. So if you're criticised for being bad, then work on bad. Uh, overweight, work on that. You know, whatever your main wound, your criticism wound is, then that would be a really good one to work on. So you can kind of make peace with that aspect of of uh, of your of that uh, maybe yourself or or not get triggered when you hear that kind of language um then being helpful i mean it is possible to be too helpful and too in people's faces that you know sometimes it's a bit like just but i can do it i can do it it's fine you know this sometimes people just want to be too helpful and it's almost suffocating so um you know what the opposite of helpful is whether it's just somebody that just sits about and does bugger all and it doesn't help at all right so um so yeah working because that can also be a huge trigger is you know you want to be super helpful you think it's really important to be super helpful and then those people that aren't helping don't kind of offer to help and all that can can be massively triggering for you i'm this is, I'm just thinking about my own stuff, right? <laughs> I get triggered by that. Uh, what else we got? Pleasing, I've mentioned that already. Being criticised uh, and criticism. Those would be good clearances to do to help you to loosen this wound up. Okay, so what's the next one then? The next wound is abandonment. Now, this wound can come about for many, many reasons. So, you know, yes, you can actually have been abandoned as a child um, in, in a very sort of actual way. But this abandonment doesn't always mean that they they were not there. You know, maybe there was an emotional abandonment um, because they could have been physically present, but there was maybe a lack of connection, no depth in that connection, no, um, yeah, no closeness, that kind of thing. And that you didn't really feel like your parents were really there for you, your, your caregivers were there for you. Um, it also can come about when a parent or a main caregiver dies. And, and I know that I experienced this when my mum died when I was an adult. And so, you know, she didn't deliberately die to abandon me, but the feeling of abandonment was still there. You know, like, you've left me, you know, how, what am I meant to do now without you kind of thing? Um, and, and, and this can really foster a, a really deep feeling of loneliness, of, of really just being left alone. And, and kind of like to deal with the world on your own, this kind of loneliness, aloneness can really be a strong thing for you, um, which can lead to being overly dependent on others because you're you're desperately trying to, to not be alone. So it might be that you're very emotionally dependent on your partners or your friends, and, and they might experience that as a little bit suffocating, potentially, um, because and you're like this because you just feel like you just can't cope on your own or you're not going to be able to manage on your own. Um, now, this abandonment wound can also lead to some fears like a fear of rejection or a fear of loneliness. So when you have this fear of rejection going on or a fear of loneliness, it means that you will probably end up trying to do anything to prevent being abandoned again. And so this might mean, weirdly, that you end up being the one that does the abandoning or the rejecting, because then at least you get in there first, you know, because then at least they won't abandon you. You know, you can get in there and then know that you're going to be, and you, you know, you know that you're going to be OK because you, you're not the one being abandoned. Because it's this, this feeling of them abandoning you, which is the real hurtful aspect of this wound. But it, this also can show up in other ways in terms of projects and creative endeavors or you know in your work life where you might not uh, stick with something until completion you might kind of abandon the project and so it means that you have things that you try and do that just don't get done they, they just you're great at starting and not so great at finishing hi I've got that one I've got the t-shirt <laughs> um so, yeah, so people with fears of abandonment might think things like, um, you know, I'll leave you before you leave me. Uh, nobody supports me. And so I'm not therefore prepared to support anybody else. Um, and if you leave me, you won't come back in you know, a sort of dramatic um, sense about it all. Um, so how does this wound show up? So I've talked about some of these already, but the smothering of others, you know, because you need to be looked after and not abandoned. So that can kind of feel quite smothering from their perspective. Um, this dependency on other people. Um, and so maybe you therefore become a bit of a burden on them, or maybe there's a fear of being a burden. So this burden energy 
kind of isn't too far away from you whether or not you're aware of it or not you might have a fear of it but there's definitely this kind of burdensome energy not far from you um this fear of loneliness loneliness might kind of get in the way of you really sort of acting well independently you know because you you are you foster this dependence on others being independent and and you know, living on your own or, or working independently, operating independently can be a bit of a challenge for you. This might mean also this loneliness, this fear of loneliness might, might mean that you end up sort of spending a lot of time crying on your own and, and feeling overwhelmed by loneliness. Even though you might not actually be lonely, the feeling of it, it could be quite overwhelming. Um, there is a tendency with this wound to have a bit of a victim mindset. So that means that, you know, you, you see yourself as the victim of the world. So, you know, oh, my God, I've got such bad luck. The universe is out to get me. Um, things happen to me. It's not my fault. Oh, it, this thing has gone wrong again. Woe is me. Oh, my God, I'm just getting on the bad end of everything. This sense of you're not in control of what's happening in your life it's happening to you you know that that's really how sort of the victim thing kind of shows up really um that, that things aren't your fault and that means that you're not really taking responsibility for your life but that that i'm going to talk about that in a bit um another aspect is where you might dial up your suffering a little bit just to attract that attention because it's again this kind of it's a way of bringing people in and close and you know if you're not well then people aren't going to leave you unwell they're going to come and see you they're going to check you're okay so you might kind of make it sound a little bit worse than it is just to kind of bring people close a lot of people that have this wound end up sort of suffering a lot more than they than they need to on the physical on, on this kind of front because because the, the, the mind is a powerful thing the minute you kind of tell yourself that actually you're suffering a lot more and your your aches and pains or whatever it is you're experiencing are worse than maybe they are that then your body kind of goes, oh, they're worse than that. Okay, well, I'll dial this up then. And then, then before you know it, you are suffering more than that. So it's a very catch-22 situation if you're not careful and you don't kind of spot it happening. Um, you are susceptible to, le to celebrity behaviour. And so what I mean by this is this, I, this, this constant talking of self, um, maybe this, you know, the Instagram kind of vibe of, oh, I'm doing this now and look at me doing this and da da da, da. You know, like, do we all care? Maybe not, but a sense that everybody else, else does care. Um, there are problems with this wound around making decisions. And again, this is the acting independently thing where, you know, when you are truly independent, you're, you, you kind of have to think through the decisions for yourself because you're thinking through things for you. But when you are dependent on others, that makes it really hard to make a decision because you've got to consider them. And then, well, what do they want? And, and this just makes decisions diff, just tricky territory. OK, so um, this is why work, you know, independence is a, is a strong theme in terms of the head track clearances I'm going to talk later on. What else have I got on my list? Um, yeah, you resist the advice of others. Um, your moods can be quite changeable. And this is this kind of this ebb and flow of these feelings of loneliness. And, and as you come and go with other people, it kind of, because you are dependent on others, then you don't have your own, not energy source, but the sense of I can look after myself and therefore I can keep myself in a, in a, in a, solid stable emotional place your emotions your sense of well-being is very dependent on others and if they're there or not then that can really affect how you are so that can really show up as a sort of up and down emotional journey whereas if you're kind of you have a strong sense of yourself and that independence and that foundation in you then you're less susceptible to what's going on outside which can give you a much stronger emotional foundation um You've got problems ending relationships because you do need to have somebody there for you. So you might be one of those people that is in a very long relationship and it might not be the best one for you because you simply can't be the one to end it, even though it might be really bad for you. Um, hi, I've got this one. Yes, yes, I was in one of these relationships <laughs> where it had to get so bad. Like it was like, Lex, you cannot possibly carry on in this relationship because this is ridiculous behavior that you're tolerating you've got to get out now there's no excuse you've got to get out and then when I came out of that I was a total mess I mean it was you know so this idea that you're in this 
you know, ending relationships unless there's a really kind of, yeah, I don't want to go into that, but I'm sure you get the idea. Um, There's also a lot of use of guilt here where there is this sense of, you know, you owe me because I did that for you and now you need to be there for me. Um, So you need to do this thing for me too. You know, this kind of, you know, again, this is creating this very strong connection, this dependence that, that that you're kind of locking people in with this, you know, into you to stop them from going away. Right. This is, this is how this fear manifests means you can end up sort of manipulating to that level. And you might not realize to the degree to which you're doing this. Um, What else? Uh, That's it on my list of how it shows up. Now, Let's talk about the head trash clearances then. So I've mentioned independence and dependence. So again, that's a very, very strong theme. But obviously, we've got to like look at loneliness, being alone, being on your own, those kind of themes, um, abandoned, being abandoned, um, being rejected, uh, rejection, being a victim. That can be a good clearance as well. Making decisions or being decisive, that kind of thing. Sadness. You know, when we're overwhelmed with these kind of strong feelings of sadness, um, sometimes that that excess sadness energy, we just need to kind of let all of that go um, and just sort of give ourselves a little bit of an emotional break. Um, And also being a burden might also be a good clearance to do to help loosen this wound a little bit. Okay, so next one is the rejection room, which I think is the last one. Brilliant. Um, So this rejection room, now this can also start quite early on in the life. In fact, from the moment of conception to your first year of age. So that reject, when I say conception, you might think, what? But if you think about unwanted pregnancies where the mother is going to be, I don't want this baby, and I didn't want this baby, this is an accident. So already that sense of I am not wanted starts from the moment of conception. And um, there's a lot of, you know, babies feel this energy. So, um, so this is where this wound can really start showing up very, very, very early on. Um, and, and it really comes from this feeling of just not being accepted or just being rejected by your main parent or your caregiver. Um, but what's really important to understand here is it's this is how there's a new infant that's experienced in the world. So, so for example, there might be a situation whereby the birth um maybe was complicated for the mother and so when the baby's arrived the baby gets taken away so that she can get some medical attention right so obviously she's got to do that for her own health and well-being but just the fact that that baby gets taken out of the mother's arms in that moment can be really experienced by that infant as being rejected by the mother because they've just been in the womb for the whole time and being in her energy and being in her you know with her and suddenly she's handing a ba- the baby away so that you know very innocent or situations that certainly are not intended in that way could be felt that way by the baby and I think that's really important to kind of um, clue into that because you know we might look back at our own upbringing and think well no I wasn't my parents adored me and it's all great and we've had a great family life and blah 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 uh, but actually there could be some very innocent situations that happened within the first year of life that um that that mean that 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 wound has has been created and and, and therefore anything else that gets that that is aligned with that wound can sort of make it even deeper and deeper. Um, and so you know when you think about how this wound can come about, it is not surprising that this one is so widespread and universal. You know, it's not hard to see this one, especially when you think about how many pregnancies are happen that our accidents may be unplanned and so maybe in the first few months the mother's a bit like oh I don't know if I want the baby I don't oh and then they you know get used to it and then and then and then it's all fine but there's the, the shock of pregnancy at the beginning could be that oh my god I don't I, I'm not sure I'm ready for this so this is why so many of us all of us are walking around with this one to in varying degrees um so if you've got this wound if as you have this wound, like we all do, um, then it could mean that you feel undeserving of attention, uh, affection, and and, you know, and love. Um, and so there are you're going to be plagued with thoughts of rejection, of being undesirable or being unworthy and worthless, uh, undeserving. 
those kind of things can really sort of be um, quite strong for you. And depending on how, you know, whether or not we all have this wound to a degree and it's just how deep that wound is. And so for some of us, it's it's going to be, a, you know, not very deep at all, whereas others, you know, what, what how our childhood ended up being and whether our parents, you know, what the, our parents and our upbringing was like, you know, some of those things could have made that wound a lot deeper and deeper and deeper. And so this this is some of this stuff can really grow or be stronger or more dominant for you, depending on how deep this wound is. Um, those that have been rejected of children, um, as adults, sometimes they become quite elusive, um, maybe wanting, you know, maybe you want to spend time on your own. Um, because then when you're on your own, you're safe from possible rejection or abandonment. Nobody can abandon you when you're sitting on your own. Um, and so by creating situations where you can't be abandoned or rejected, um, you know, there's, there's a similar uh, pattern going on here to the abandonment wound. But the rejection one is a little bit similar but different, right? There is a different energy to this rejection mood. Um, so how does this wound show up then? So it might be that you hold back from putting yourself forward for things because you just assume you're going to get rejected. You know, that's just like, well, there's no point because people aren't going to want it. I'm not going to be wanted, um, that kind of thing. Um, also, when you do have rejection, it's likely to, that you're going to take it to heart, take it super seriously, and it's really going to affect you quite deeply. Whereas those that don't really have the wound are like, they just you know, they just bounce it off, they just bounce back, they're no biggie, you know, they're like, yeah, whatever, you know, um, uh, it's, it's just no big deal for them. Whereas others are like, oh my God, and it's, it's really, you know, that's it, they don't want to try and do that again for a while, I mean, just in case it happens again. Um, there are going to be some people in this room that really have a sense of dissatisfaction with who they are as a person. Um, and, and, and this is, very much tied into the, the worthy kind of the worthy aspect of this you might see yourself as you know someone who's meaningless that doesn't really have any worth anything worth to share anything um yeah anything any anything worthy to contribute to maybe a conversation to a project to a yeah there's there's a, there's a sense that I haven't got anything worthy to give anything meaningful to contribute um there's also possibly a, a lack of self-respect here as well, which means that it can turn into some quite poor personal boundaries where your boundaries are very leaky in the sense that, well, they're not really there. And, and, and you know, so saying no might be hard and, and finding yourself dragged into situations or doing something that you don't really want to do because, you know, you, you're not really able to kind of protect yourself because of this lack of self-respect, respect for self going on. Um, there might be moments when you consider yourself a family freak. Um, this happens where, you know, it, which is tied into this kind of um, feeling rejected, feeling like the black sheep in the family, feeling like the one that's left out or the the different one because you're rejected. So that that can maybe show up as somebody that's feels like, well, I'm, I'm the weirdo in the family, that kind of thing. Um, and to escape some of these feelings, what, you know, what you're trying to do is escape this reality where you might get rejected. So there's, there is a tendency here to maybe escape into things like maybe alcohol or drugs or trips or virtual games or, you know, this kind of sense of an alternate reality, a, a different place, a different something that is not your current reality. Um there is also this alternative reality can mean that you've got a really brilliant imagination and creative imagination. So, you know, like with all of these things, there are some really good things that come out of some of these things. It's not all bad, right? So this rich imagination means you can have incredible creative talent. Um, but this tendency to withdraw because, you know, wanting to sort of isolate yourself, protect yourself from rejection means that you can then create this sense of isolation or loneliness for yourself because of this not wanting to engage too much with those around you in case they reject you, right? Um, and also what you might end up doing is um, to help you kind of cope with the reality that you are in is you just keep yourself super, super busy because, you know, the reality is you don't, you don't want to be in this reality. So you don't want to notice it too much. You don't want to experience it too much so busy 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 uh, lots of things to do can't sit 
still and and really be with this reality for any for too long because if I keep myself busy then I, then then you know then, then I can cope with this um and so sitting still relaxing being in the moment not doing anything that can be really 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 challenging um and then also there's a tendency for perfectionism and things that just need to be as in a certain way so what kind of head draft clearances can you do then to uh, loosen this wound so obviously rejection being rejected that would be a really good one to do the perfection streak being perfect um but also the worthy you know being worthy to try and we like make peace with the idea of of not being worthy there are certain situations where not everybody's carries worth and that's okay we don't have to be worthy all the time you know there are going to be you know if you're stranded on a boat out to sea and you've got an it a genius with you well they're not going to be super worthy and worth like worth something on that boat in that moment right they'll be really served well elsewhere so we don't have to be worthy in every situation but when we have this worthy this not worthy this kind of worthless wound going on we it matters it just we we dial it up the importance of it so we need to make peace with some of these aspects and, and one of those is that we're being worthy but also being deserving Respect would be a good one to do as well. Um, and um, isolation, being isolated, being on your own, loneliness. Again, those are quite thing, good things to do. And also this being busy, you know, and, and or not having anything to do, the kind of just being so, being present in your reality to help you kind of start being okay with the reality that you're in and not try and kind of take yourself away from it by these distractions, such as the drugs or the alcohol or the gaming and all, all of that kind of thing. So those there, that, that's those are the five main universal wounds that we all suffer from to one degree. So let me just recap what they are, just for those of you that um, so we've got betrayal, we've got injustice, we've got humiliation, abandonment, and rejection. Now, in order to really fully heal from these wounds, my view is that we really need to kind of uncover the root events, those those events that kind of put those wounds in in the first place, because they were put in originally. There were experiences that really kind of wounded us originally when they first happened. And then as we were exposed to other similar situations, these wounds just got deeper and more embedded so to really fully heal from these wounds, what we really need to do is just go back and clear the the emotional um, debris, the scarring, the wounding that is still in place from those early experiences. And, and the thing that we that I think is also worth bearing in mind is some of these wounds aren't just wounds that were created in our current life we're also carrying the memory of these wounds from our ancestors because these the memories of these wounds from our ancestors are going to be within our very very cells now um there's a lot of science to support the memories of traumas within that that, that show up in our, our our dna in our cells and the reason for that is very simple that if our parents suffered from um whatever was going on in their life in order to help prepare the next generation to survive in the environment that they were uh, that they lived in they need to prime their offspring to be prepared for those kind of things happening so if the parent your parent your grandparents anybody in your family line has experienced rejection abandonment humiliation betrayal you know any of those and and my goodness the minute you you start looking back up your family tree you realize that you know this is the, these wounds go back generations right then we have the memories of these wounds within ourselves as well and so the memories of this within us means that even if you didn't have you know let's say that you hadn't got any of this stuff going on for you based on what you know about your own childhood and your parents and, and all of that the chances are that they had it your grandparents had it great grandparents have experienced some of this to some degree and so that energy that emotional energy and scarring those wounds are going to be within you today 
So to really let go of this stuff, we need to look beyond our current life. You know, we need to consider our time in the womb. We need to consider our ancestors' life experiences as well. And so for me, when it comes to clearing those traumas, we need to really make sure that what we're doing is far reaching enough to kind of gather all of those emotional experiences, all of those traumas and wounds together so that we can clear the totality of all the experiences that have lined up under this theme, that that sit under this umbrella within you. Now, if you're interested, I'm going to be running some free trauma clearings to look at the themes that I've described today. You need to check in with the website at clearyourheadtrash.com to find out more about when those are happening. Um, They're going to be free. So if you want to clear some of these wounds and get rid of all of the wounding, the energy that you're carrying around this stuff, then simply just sign up on the website and you need to show up live though because they are live clearances um but that is how you can start to let go of some of these wounds and heal from them because it's about letting go of the 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 stuff that created the wound in the first place until you go back to the roots and dissolve and just get rid of all of that old energy they're still going to show up for you to some degree And what we really want to do is have a clean slate, have an emotional clean slate so that you're not being affected by this stuff anymore. Um, So I hope that this has been a useful uh, episode for you. and, um, And I'm going to see you again next time. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in. You've just been listening to me, Alexi Legion, here on The Head Trash Show. If you enjoyed the show or the book, Clear Your Head Trash, I'd really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes or Amazon. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes for more insights, interviews and inspiration for clearing your head trash and reclaiming your headspace. Until next time, bye for now.